Hello, I'm Brandon Brookins, Director of Client Services for Primex. We're going to learn how to install a sensor device in a refrigerator today. The first thing is to learn uh, is to figure out the location that you're going to place the device. We have two different types of sensors. One is an ethernet sensor, one is a wireless device. And as you can tell, there is an ethernet port on the ethernet device and there's one, there is not one on the uh, wireless device. So first thing to do is determine if you have Wi-Fi in the location that you're going to install these devices. The best way to do that is to take an ordinary cell phone, download uh, some sort of wireless analysis device or uh, app such as this, and look for the uh, SSID or the network that you're going to be using. So in this case, we have one that's called opt-out, and that's the one that we're going to look for and we at least want it to be above the minus 60 on this meter. So as you can see, we have a, a spike that's well above that, and we're gonna take that and put it right by our refrigerator, mimicking where we would potentially put that device. So we could put it here on the front, and in this scenario, we're gonna put it on the side, um, and it's a little difficult in this video to see, but I'm, I'm definitely above the 60 mark, so we know that this is a good location to place our sensor. Now that we've determined we have adequate Wi-Fi signal in here, we're going to do uh, two different uh, setups of our devices. The first one is if we don't have direct line of sight for, uh, to our access point to our device. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll find a location that we're going to put this on. Typically, we want to put all of our devices on the hinge side of the refrigerator so that any probes that run into this uh, won't be obstructed by the handle or people coming in and out of the fridge. So again, everything should go on the hinge side of the refrigerator. Next, if we don't have direct line of sight, so in, in this scenario, we're going to say we have an access point just on the other side of the wall, but we can't see it directly. We, uh, it's, it's not in the same room. So what we're going to do is we're going to place this device uh, with the LED screen here that we can see on the, on the top here above the line of the refrigerator, just as so. So again, you see that we have the, uh, the screen above the line of the refrigerator. That gives the uh, antenna in here a better chance to uh, hit that access point that's just on the other side of the wall here. So we put uh, one piece of Velcro, and it's, it's very sturdy even just, uh, just with that. The other way that we can do it is uh, if you put two pieces of Velcro on here, just, uh, just like so, you can put it on the front as long as you have direct line of sight to that access point. So in this scenario, our access point is right in that room. I can see it from here. We're gonna place the device with the, with the two Velcro pieces right on there. Just snaps right on. And it's secure to the front of the refrigerator, the device, uh, the asset that you're monitoring. Once we've placed our devices on our refrigerator, next we're going to uh, put our probe and thermal buffer inside of the refrigerator itself. Typically, you'll get this packaged as uh, one piece with the uh, probe and the thermal buffer in the package for that. So what we'll want to do is we'll want to open the refrigerator. Uh, one thing to note is there's many different types of refrigerators out there. Uh, some with uh, pull-out shelves like this, some with glass shelves, uh, great shelves, uh, graded shelves, but uh, any of these refrigerators, you can put these devices in. We'll show a couple different examples. So we're going to show this one with a, uh, a typical shelf that uh, pulls in and out. This is probably the most difficult uh, situation that you would have to uh, place the probe itself into. So the first thing that we'll want to look at is where is the cooling uh, element of the fan in this refrigerator. You can see it's right on the top here in, in this refrigerator. That's an area that we want to avoid putting this probe and glycol bottle. You don't want direct contact or access to the uh, fan or the cooling piece to this. So what, what I've already done is scoped out an area and I've got two areas on here. I've got one on the bottom shelf that I could put this. The other one, and I'll show you as I pull out the shelf here itself, is right underneath here. I could place it on the bottom. So I've got two different areas depending on how uh, you want to install this uh, piece. The other option that I'll show you later is if you want to put a little basket in here, you can place the probe in there. So the first one that we'll do, uh, we'll just use the, uh, the one that we can see right here on this shelf. Uh, so I'm gonna put this back in. So I put, uh, as you can see, I put uh, the opposite piece of the Velcro on here and I put one right on the bottle. And I'm gonna place that uh, 
probe and thermal buffer right on there. So you can put anything else that you want uh, around that uh, piece. You want to point the uh, wiring towards the back of the refrigerator. The reason for that is uh, from a cable management standpoint that you can uh, have some control over where that uh, cable is going. And again, so that people using this don't have any issues with uh, taking that cable out. So I'm going to uh, route this through the hinge side. And remember, everything, all of our devices should be on the hinge side uh, for this. So I'm going to plug it into this device here. Now the next thing that we're going to want to look at is how we're we going to cable manage, cable manage this. Uh, because this is a sliding door, it becomes uh, a little bit of a challenge in that you have to take, it, take into consideration that opening and closing of the, of the door for that. So we'll want to route the cable as we would look at this with this, leaving a little bit of slack, again, considering that we're going to uh, have this drawer coming in and out. Again, if we see, perfect, it will fit right in. So what we'll take is we'll have some cable management pieces here, some zip ties, and some holders, just little square holders that you can get at most any hardware store. And we'll uh, take the backing off of one of these, place it right there, then we can put our zip tie through one of the four holes that are available. And I'm going to route that right around the cable here. Again, this is all about cable management and making sure that the users don't uh, inadvertently pull that probe out and uh, cause any issues with the readings that they need to take. So we'll hold that tight. We'll grab our diagonal cutters here. And we're just going to cut that off just so that it looks nice and clean and neat. What we'll do is we'll then route additional holders uh, right around here to hold that in place so that the users can use all, as much of the usable space as, uh, as is available in here. Now that we've finished our cable management, as you can see, we have, uh, we've routed the uh, cable around here. And uh, it's all secure here so that, again, you can place uh, any types of vaccines, blood, whatever you have in these uh, particular drawers. And again, there's enough clearance in here that it will open and close uh, very effectively. We've left enough slack on here so that we can do some additional cable management on the outside of the uh, refrigerator. So now that we're done with this, we're going to close that up, close the refrigerator. Now we're going to go to the device side of this. And I'm going to take the... Uh, sensor off of the refrigerator, you have a couple different options. If uh, there's uh, two different places where you can place the uh, probe connection in here, uh, this is, if this port is blocked off here, this would be a single probe. If both of these are open, it would be a dual probe uh, for that. So now that we have our uh, probe, we're going to place it into our device uh, here. And then in this case, we're going to run these devices off AC power. So we have a power cord here. And uh, there's only one connection that this can fit in right at the top here. And we'll place that in there. Now we're going to put our device back on the refrigerator. Then the next step is uh, continuous cable management on the outside of the refrigerator. So our plug for this is right behind here. I'm going to plug it in. We'll place it right there. So now I've got two pieces of cable. One thing to remember here is that uh, at some point within two years, you're going to replace the probe here. So you don't want to necessarily tie these two pieces together. Really think of these as two separate uh, cables that you have to manage here. So I'm going to take another one of our stoppers here and pull this off. And I'm going to use this for both of our devices. Now I, I like to put one right close to the device itself because sometimes people come by and they pull these and then it drops to the floor and nobody knows where it goes to. So I'm going to take one of our zip ties here and tie this one up separate from the power here so that in two years 
when you have to replace that probe to meet uh, any regulatory body requirements, you don't have to cut both of them. You just cut the, uh, the probe cable here. We'll come back and uh, cut these off uh, later on. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to run, work with the AC power. So my uh, power's uh, just on this side of the wall, so I'm going to run this, run two extra holders, one down here, and I'm going to put one, kind of measure it up, and I'm going to put one right down here to hold that power cable in place. Again, so if anybody bumps it, um, it's going to stay right with the refrigerator here. So I'm going to use uh, more zip ties and I'm going to use one part of that holder. It's very key uh, cable management and making sure that these wires and everything stay clear and the users of these refrigerators uh, don't accidentally bump them uh, because it's a continuous monitoring system and you want to make sure that it's doing the job that it should there. So I'm gonna... And again, we'll come back and clear those up. So here, uh, we're gonna finish up with our uh, probe. I'd like to just loop this up here and leave a little slack, because remember, we've got the uh, drawer that we've gotta pull in and out here. So we're gonna try to leave a little bit of slack just so that we can deal with the drawer going in and out. So I've got this looped around. Take my last piece, zip tie, and again, zip this closed, and get it nice and tight. And we'll use our diagonal cutters again to snip all these. And there we are. Now that we've finished our cable management, the last thing is, is to check in the device. So we're going to uh, first take off our device here. We can unplug these for the moment. And in this case, we're running this on AC power. So we're gonna take off our cover and there's a battery backup that we're going to place in here as well. Before we place this, uh, we're gonna turn this switch right here to the up position. What that means is it's going to run on a battery backup um, in case the AC power for some reason gets pulled or the, or the power goes out. So we're going to put that in. We're going to replace the cover. And I'm going to add the uh, AC power here. As you can see right there, we're going to plug back in that probe. And we're going to put the device back on. I'm going to plug this in the back. Now what you'll see is you'll, you'll see it zero out. It'll show a uh, temperature. And what we'll wait for is right at the bottom there, it will uh, display a signal OK or no signal, depending on whether or not it receives a valid signal from the wireless access point. So this may take a couple minutes, so we'll wait on that. Now that the display has OK signal on it, the first test we're going to try is to make sure that the battery backup works. So we're going to pull the AC power plug just like this. It's going to zero itself out. Then it's going to reset and display again. So again, that just shows that uh, it's gone from AC power now to a uh, battery backup. So we're going to plug this back in here. The next test that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do a manual check-in. Even though it has a signal OK down here, we're just going to want to make sure, double check, that the device is checked into the OneView software. So you see the button here with the arrow and the line above it? We're going to press and release that once, and you're going to hear a beep. That just means that it's uh, turned itself on. The next uh, couple beeps will indicate whether or not it's got onto the network, 
and then passed over to one view. So you ha actually heard five beeps, which is uh, two beeps for the network and three beeps means it's got onto the one view software. And again, you see the signal okay here. So now our installation is complete. We've uh, figured out the uh, location for the device, done some cable management, installed the probe, and done a series of check-ins and verifications to make sure the device is working consistently. Thank you.